Hello there, welcome back to the channel. In this video, they're going to see how to deploy Docker containers using Docker Swarm. This is a small four part series I'm doing, and um, let's get started. The first thing is why Docker Swarm? Because Kubernetes is the industry standard now. Why would you want to use Docker Swarm to deploy your Docker containers? Because it's actually easy. That's the simple answer I have. I've been using Docker Swarm for a very long time now, and I'm looking for alternatives. And I keep going to Kubernetes, but Kubernetes is a complex orchestration system. If you just want to host Docker containers, and you are the only person managing it, and you want to keep things simple, Docker Swarm is the way to go. But the problem with the status of Docker Swarm is it's uncertain. The Docker Enterprise division is sold and there is no major development happening. That being said, it's still a really good alternative if you just want to run a development server uh, just for your personal use. Um, that's what I've been doing. So uh, why use Docker Swarm? Yeah, because it comes with Docker. You can do native stuff uh, in the docker engine it's very very simple to create a cluster we just basically uh, run a couple of commands and then connect your machines together and then have your own small docker swarm cluster running and you don't have to be familiar with all the complexities involved in kubernetes very very simple if you want to deploy containers you can easily do it without so much hassle and how much does it gonna cost? I'm going to use Hetzner Cloud, and the goal is to keep it under 15 euros because we are going to only use one machine and try to host as much as possible in that one machine. You can use the referral link here and you will get 20 euros for free and you can try it out for yourself. And if you like it, you like it. And then if you don't like it, just cancel the account and then move on. Uh, if you are following along, it will help you a lot just to understand how to set it up in Hetzner Cloud. I chose Hetzner Cloud because it's the cheapest option here in Europe, and uh, that's been a, that's what I've been using it. And yeah, for me, it kind of looked like a good deal. And what are the goals of this? The goal is to create a machine where you set up a firewall and uh, and have SSH keys. I don't want to use passwords. Uh, I want to use SSH keys to connect to the machine. I want to use a reverse proxy called traffic to redirect traffic to containers. And traffic also has uh, Let's Encrypt inbuilt, so SSL is taken care of. And also deploy Redis, Postgres, RabbitMQ, and a Docker registry. And um, I don't want to log in to my machine to deploy and manage containers so i will install portliner which will give a ui for me to manage the cluster and finally i want to deploy the microservice which i created uh, in the last abp series i did so during that i created a small microservice application uh, which has a bunch of containers in it uh, we will see how to prepare that and then deploy it to the infrastructure we are building. It's four parts and um, all the four parts are published. You can just go and then check it out. Part one, let's do what the part one does. The first part is having a cloud Hetzner account. So just use the referral here, as I mentioned, or you can go to Hetzner dot com and register an account for yourself there is multiple options uh, here in the hetzner so make sure you choose cloud and then create an account for yourself once you create an account you will come to a page like this so this is the um, cloud console page where you can create projects and then uh, use uh, manage the service better so i already have a default and i have three other items so it just shows you what you have here and for this youtube video i created a new youtube project and inside that there is no machine 
So the first step is to go here on a security tab and then add a um, SSH key. So if you don't have an SSH key, that's the first thing you're going to create. So this is the um, command to create a SSH key. Just create this. You will have two files and one file will have a .pub in it. That's the public key. You just copy that key and then go to security section here. And then you can click add SSH key and then put your SSH key here and then say click add SSH key. That's it. Um, yeah, so this is how it will look like. You click add SSH key here and then you will have your SSH key. The next step is going to the firewall. So if you go and say create firewall, you can you will have rules here and you can add ports. So if you want to add more ports, you want to use a web server. That means port 80 should be available. And then there is also SSL certificates involved. So port 443 is required. So we just need these three ports. We are not going to open any other ports. Everything else is blocked. Only these three ports are accessible. This is the SSH port, HTTP port and uh, HTTPS port. I think I already created this firewall and um, it's just not applied to anything. So firewall name is firewall one. You don't have to be fancy. Uh, just create a firewall and then now we just come and add a server. There are four locations as of now. There, there are three locations for EU Central, uh, one location in US. So just choose whatever the location you want and then come to this place here. It's not obvious, but um, there's a section called Apps. You click here and then there is a Docker CE available. Click on the Docker CE and it automatically recommends a stack for you come down and then this is the recommended machine and it costs seven euros a month let's take it and we have to expose the machine to the internet so you need an ip so we select these things but there will be cases where you don't want to expose it uh, and then create a load balancer which also costs some of the money it's up to you if you don't want to expose it don't expose it and then create a firewall here the, the the created firewall shows up you just select the firewall and the ssh key which we added to also shows up so you just select it and then give it a name i would say youtube one and i'm going to add a backup option as well so backup is one euros again so the total cost is nine euros yeah that's it we have a uh, Three AMD CPUs with four gigs of RAM and 80 GB um, SSD, and then the traffic is 20 terabytes. The price is seven euros a month. Let's create and buy, and our machine is created. Just wait for everything to be finished, and then you will see your yeah, um, and percentage sign, which is 100%, and then you will see everything coming up. Let's give it a minute. Okay, the server is created. You can click and come and see the graphs here and the backups. So the backups is a rolling backup. So it takes uh, seven slots. And once the seven slots are filled, it just adds more slots. Mm, and then come here and then see that there is a firewall applied. So we have three ports open and the volumes. There is nothing here. I would recommend you just go and then protect your machine so that you just don't uh, delete them by mistake. Okay. Once you have the machine, then the next step is adding a DNS entry. So that means you will have a domain, your domain, and you should tell your domain to go to that machine we just created so if you go here you will see an ip address here this is the ip address and what we are going to do is we have this ip address and we when we type taskkey.entersubash.com this url should go to this ip address so for that we need to add a error code maybe not taskkey um i would want 
YouTube one because that's the machine name. So YouTube one should go to this um, IP address. And whenever you say something like, um, I don't know, and for a star, we create a C name and then point to YouTube one. So what we are doing is whenever someone types YouTube one, we are sending it to this IP and whenever we are, whenever someone types anything else, we are sending it to YouTube one. So I think uh, if, if it's too confusing, just remove this. So this is the subdomain and this sub subdomain goes to this IP, which, which is what we created. So any other subdomain, which is denoted by star will go to youtube1.andosubash.com so you have to go to your dns provider it could be godaddy namecheap um i don't know where you bought your domain you just have to go and then add this record you have to make sure whatever the url you're typing in our case youtube1.andosubash.com is going to this ip here is a simple sample. So this is the A record. This is your IP and it goes to your domain. That's a C name with the star. Star denotes that everything, everything including yourdomain.com and also subdomains like demo1.yourdomain.com also goes to this IP. So first let me add the entry and then I can show you with the dig tool how the entry changes uh the dns redirection so i have updated my dns and let's see what happens so if i go to youtube and maybe i'll just zoom it a little bit youtube1.entosubash.com and if i ask for any record it goes to the ip which is the ip we created right now and if i add uh test one dot YouTube one, no record phone. But if I say, see, it goes to YouTube one. And if I can add this two, one, two, it still goes to YouTube one. Every, so our main domain is YouTube.antosubash. And anything we add here, it doesn't matter. Uh, it still goes to YouTube one. So we just, so our, my, in my case, my main domain is YouTube.antosubash.com. In for yours, it could be like something like yourdomain.com. So it could be anything. So just make sure that the the domain goes to the machine we just created. That's it. And how that looks like, this is how it looks like. So you will add a entry, your IP address, and then your IP address goes to your domain, and then a CNAME entry with a star. And then that goes to your domain. Make sure that happens. And then the route will happen properly. And come to the dig and then you can try it out uh, like I did. Like uh, put, put test one, then youtube.entosubash.com. And you will see the C name available. And then the C name with the A record, which goes to the correct IP address. So now we have the machine, we have the domain going to the IP address, the part one is done.